Half a day, everyone. My name is Tina, and I'm going to be taking you through how to turn a PDF worksheet that you already have on file into an interactive worksheet that your students can fill out and turn in via Google Classrooms. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in order to turn our worksheets into a, our PDF worksheets into an interactive, we of course need to know what particular worksheet we want. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is go down here. I've already pulled something up. This is a main idea packet that I had purchased with TPT. So of course, because I purchased it, I can go ahead and use this. Um, now, I don't have to separate all of these files. Um, that's the beauty of things. If you have purchased packets, you don't have to worry about separating every single one of these files um, out into this 52 pages that the packet contains because I can just kind of pick and choose what I want. What I want to do is make sure that I can actually see the entire file. This view is at 135%, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to a 65%. One of the first things I'm going to do, notice I can actually see the entire worksheet here that I want from the unit. And then the next thing I'm going to do once I can see this, I'm going to line this up into a nice position here where I can view all of that. Then I am going to come down and I'm going to search for my snipping tool that is typically um, that comes with your system, right, from Microsoft. I'm going to click on my snipping tool and your snipping tool is going to be your best friend in creating and helping you create all of these things. Um, it's, it saves your screens and you know it just makes your life so much easier. So once I pull up my snipping tool, I'm going to click on new and what will happen is my whole screen will go um, will end up looking just like this where it looks all whited out. I'm going to come up here and take my little cross tool. This is actually going to, um, we're going to put this into the area that we want to have snipped. So, and again, I say that because I can snip the whole thing or I can actually choose to maybe only snip one portion. But whatever I want to snip, again, it's kind of cutting everything. I'm going to highlight all of that. Once it's done, a new screen comes up just like this here. And this is what's going to show up. This is what I've snipped off. I'm going to go ahead and save this particular item. I'm going to save my snip. I want to go ahead and save this to my desktop for easy, um, to find it easily. And we are going to call this main idea. And this was the pandas, main idea panda. And if you notice, the file is being saved as a PNG, and that's exactly what we want. Okay, we're going to hit save. Once that's through, I can close these things off. I can go ahead now and come up to my, um, I need to get back into my Google. And I'm going to come up to my waffle because what we're going to do is we are going to utilize, we can do one of two things. Um, we can save this into a just go into Google Slides or I can actually start do the actual worksheet from my classroom my classwork that way I don't have to double my efforts here I'm gonna come up to classwork I'm gonna hit create and we're gonna create this assignment right here and now and the beauty is not only do I create this assignment but it'll also be saved on my Google Slides all right so we are going to call this main idea, main idea pandas, okay, and we're going to tell the students to please see the attached to complete and be, be good with your instructions, be better than I am, um, but for purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to make this as simple as possible. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create, so we're going to click on create and we are utilizing slides. So let's go ahead and use slides. I'm creating something whole, um, completely new. I like to just create from within my classroom just because I kind of kill two birds with one stone, right? Um, anytime after this, I will be able to um, just pull the document from my drive and go ahead and 
add it to um, a particular assignment in the future, but because right now I want to create it within my classroom, I am going to go ahead and get rid of my dialog boxes here because I do not need them. I want a blank page and I'm going to title this up here. Always title everything, main idea. Pandas. Okay. And if you notice, our layout for our slide is not ideal for a worksheet because our view for that worksheet was an eight and a half by 11. This is widescreen format, so we do need to change that. All we're going to do is come over to File. We're going to come down to the Page Setup. We're gonna click on Page Setup. Notice again, it's on widescreen. We're gonna click here on the little triangle so that we can go down to custom. We're gonna customize our page setup now, and we are gonna make this an eight and a half by 11. And we are going to apply that. And boom, like magic, our page is now in the layout that we do want it. So now what we want to do is we want to take that PNG file that we just saved and we want to go ahead and insert this in a manner that which the children cannot move around. And let me show you what that means. If I take the image that we just did, we uploaded it from the computer and I'm going to take the pandas and we're going to put this in. This is exactly what we want it to look like, right? The problem is because this is going to be the file that the students see, they're going to have the ability to move this around. They can move it here, they can move it there. Um, this is typically what usually happens. They might resize it and they're sitting there going, oh my goodness, what did I do? That's not what you want them to do. So we are not going to insert as a image. What we are going to do is we are going to lock in our image and we're going to do that by clicking on background. We are now going to choose an image from our background and we are going to go from upload and we are going to browse our computer and we're going to find that file that we just saved and it was on our desktop and it was naming idea pandas. We are going to open that. And then once it actually inserts it, we're going to hit done. This is now exactly, again, this is what we want to have happen. But if you notice, when I click on this, I can't do anything. I This image is not going to move anywhere. That's exactly what we want to have happen for our students, right? Again, it is a interactive worksheet. So because we insert whatever image as a background, then it locks it in for us. Okay, students won't be able to do anything with it. Now what we're going to do, because again, they're not able to do anything on this. If we click on anything, they can't even interact with it yet. So what we're going to do, and let me just go ahead and increase my view so that you can actually see that. What we're going to do here Okay, we want the students to be able, here's the question, we want them to be able to, according to this worksheet, they are going to write the letter of the main idea on the line. Here's their four choices, A, B, C, D. We want them to be able to fill that in here. So all we need to do to make this interactive is click on the text box, and we are going to create our text box here. And while we're in there, we can actually create the settings here. We might want this to be a um, 18 font, or we might want this, it's probably too big. We want this to be 16 font. Okay. And I'm going to raise that up. I'm just kind of aligning things here. I might want to go ahead and change the font because I like something better. I want it, um, and I want it bolded. So I've already set this up here for this particular um, line there that the students are going to fill in. And this is just the tedious part of it now is all I'm going to do because everything is pretty much the same way and I've set this box up, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. 
Notice when you paste, it comes down. I'm just going to pull this here. I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to keep pulling that down. And if you notice, it looks as though we are missing everything, right? There isn't anything that we're seeing. We don't want our students to really see these boxes. We just go ahead and pull them down. And we do that for the for the entire worksheet. Again, this is just a tedious, tedious um, job to do depending on the worksheet that you are giving the students. But once you're done with this, and I'm just about done here, we're just going to assume that we finished off. I think I missed this. Okay. You can go back and if you click on the lines, notice we do have text boxes. Okay, and you would have taught your students, um, you're going to want to teach your students if you haven't done it already, how to use Google Slides, how to just click on a line and what will appear would be a text box. And then all they need to do is double click in there and then type in D because they're looking for A, B, C, D, and that's all they would need to do. Okay, um, but it's as simple as that. The worksheet has been created. I want to make sure I think I have a few more boxes to do here. And I'm going to be completed in just a minute. Okay. And that's all you need to do. Now, down here, typically, what I would like to do, um, right where you have the speaker notes, is you can give directions or you can go ahead and drag that down so that it's resized and that's not what the students are going to see right off the bat. Then that is it. You are done. Your worksheet is now interactive. You just go back and double check to make sure you have text boxes everywhere. Once you have all those text boxes in, you can close this off. And now you are back into your assignments and you will come over here and you will decide who the, um, who the assignment is for, give it its points, give it its due date. Um, again, due dates are very important so that students know when things are due, but it'll also show up on their calendar itself. I might want to make sure that I put this into a document. We will put this into our reading folder. And then one thing I want to point out here, you got to make sure that you do, is that the presentation, because we created it in Google Classroom, is going to be untitled. We know that we titled it. The reason it's untitled, it goes to each student. It will pop their name into the presentation itself at the top, along with the title that we created. We want to make sure that we are not under the default of students can view the file. If all they can do is view the file, then it wouldn't be an interactive worksheet. So we are going to come down and we are going to select make copy for each student. Click on that. Make sure everything is filled in. And once we're done with that, we push that assignment out. And we are all through and the kids will just have the assignment. They open it up. They fill out that worksheet. They turn it in and then we are good to go. OK, you can always because we pop this into a folder, we might not be able to see it right away. I know that I'll just go into my reading folder because that's where I placed it. And I can see my assignment that I pushed out that there's five people in my class. So all five people were assigned to that. And that's all there is to it. Easy peasy, right? Anyway, if you have any questions, um, feel free to type some comments into the YouTube um, link. And or you can reach me at um, on email at kak at gdoe.net. But I hope that this made it a lot easier for you to transfer your um, worksheets into an interactive worksheets for your students so that they can just fill it in in Google Classroom and turn it in. Until next time, have a great day. Bye.